We are live. We are live. Yeah. So what's up, everybody? Grant Dunn here from Wenatchee, Washington. I got, uh, I'm very excited about this interview today because I got one of the biggest leaders in our company, and she's a woman. So it'll be kind of a cool twist on, the, uh, you know, on what we're going to talk about. And uh, I'm excited to have Tracy online because, um, you know, I've, I've met her in, actually, I officially met Tracy in Costa Rica. I uh, didn't get to talk to her a lot. We did have lunch at one point and as a group setting. And um, But one of the things that I, I love about Tracy and that I've learned from Tracy is um, seeing her at the events and watching how her, her team just surrounds her. And uh, they, they absolutely love and adore her, and they respect you, Tracy. And I think it's the coolest thing. And I, it, obviously, you have a, a huge skill there in, in building culture and, and, and creating a camaraderie. camaraderie in your uh, in your team members and and a lot of them they, they buy a lot of products so <laughs> there's something they there's do. something to that so <laughs> um, so so before we uh, get into like asking questions I think I'll just have you um, go in a little bit of your story kind of uh, the short version of your story so we can kind of move into questions and stuff like that okay well I will keep it short because um, you know stories sometimes depending on how deep you get can be we could be here grant for another three days okay yeah, yeah. Um, but generally uh, I was born and raised in Chicago Illinois from the inner city and um, went to high school there and I went to college in Florida I went to Florida a and University and um, studied business and I graduated in the fall of 99 with a master's degree so I have an MBA and the concentration is in marketing um, after that, uh, I did not get a job right away. I ended up staying in Tallahassee for about another year or so, and then I finally found a position here in Atlanta. And then I moved here and um, had a great job. I mean, I was I was a trader. I was an energy trader, and I basically marketed power, uh, meaning that my accounts were all in the New England states. And so, if a, there was a power outage in New England somewhere in there. Um, my company would get the notification and then I would go and I would search the market for power producers, people that generated electricity, and um, find out how much they'd be willing to sell their power for uh, in order to ship it over to New England. Uh, and then I would negotiate the prices between the two, so what we'd be willing to buy it for and then what we would sell it to the city for or that location that is in need of power and then our company would make the money off the difference. So I was a middleman for power. Okay. Um, and then after September the 11th, I did a lot of trading with the people in the World Trade Centers and things like that. Um, my company took a big hit, the whole energy sector did, and um, I was laid off in February of oh, March of 2002. I was laid off. And um, Grant, ironically, during that time prior to the layoff, uh, I was kind of doing real estate on the side. My hours at work, I didn't like. I worked 12-hour shifts, and I would work 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. for four days. Then I had four days off. Then I would work from 7 p.m to 7 a.m. the next set of four days. And so I was constantly flip-flopping. Sometimes I'm eating lunch at noon. Sometimes I'm eating lunch midnight. It was, sometimes I'm trying to sleep in the day, then sleep at night. It was horrible. And I was driving 30 minutes to and from work every single day. Uh, here in Atlanta traffic, it is, it was a nightmare. And I would literally come home and cry every day. Like, I hate this job. Uh, and so I started doing real estate on the side and I would do so I was doing a lot of direct mail essentially and I was you know get my list of my sellers and I would at night on the night shifts I mean I'm saying this now but on the night shifts it's very slow uh, so when I'm working overnight I would be addressing my envelopes and getting all that stuff stuff in the envelopes and getting everything ready uh, to go out in the mail the next morning and um, so when I was, uh, when they started the whole layoff process, I was hoping and begging and praying that they laid me off because I felt that if I could have more time, I could actually make my real estate business work. The thing that was making the business not work was I was always at work. <laughs> so I wanted out. And um, I didn't want to quit because uh, I wanted severance and um, I wanted Georgia unemployment, to be honest. So I did not quit. And then March, I was laid off, and I had a nice severance pay, severance check, and then I was on Georgia unemployment. And I pretty much used those funds to sustain life, to market, to do all those things. 
So the business got started in 2002, essentially my real estate business. Um, I moved back to Chicago in August of 2002. My mother was diagnosed with cancer. And um, so I packed up my car, drove back to Chicago in uh, August of 2002 and um, began my full blown real estate business there. My mom passed away March 2nd, 2003. Um, so it'll be 10 years actually in another week or so that my mom has passed on. But during that time, I was so blessed to be able to have a business moving like I had with my real estate business because I didn't have to worry about work. I could be with her every day. If she had doctor's appointments, I could go. I didn't have to take off. I didn't feel um, tied to anyone during that very critical time in, in our lives. And so um, after her passing, then it really began to ramp up on the business. So from 2002 until about 2000. Seven, the beginning of 2007, our business was extremely well. I mean, we negotiated short sales and um, we were generating, we were doing, we were closing about three deals every single month and profiting. You know, we didn't do a deal unless we could bring home a, a, a net of like $30,000. Uh, and so we were, we got it ramped up where we were doing about three of those every single month. We had six people on payroll. I had an office downtown Chicago. I mean, we were doing good. Had bought, you know, Mercedes Benz, had a Hummer, built a brand new house from the ground up. I was, you know, all of 28, 29 years old, um, 3,500 square feet, marble floor. You know, I, I had it. It was the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, I didn't really understand saving concept. I mean, I thought I did, but I, I didn't. I didn't really think that you know, one day my deals would stop or slow down. And so we kind of got caught in that, in that bubble late 2006, early 2007. And in 2007, we pretty much closed three deals for the whole year uh, compared to three deals a month. And living the type of lifestyle that, that we were living, it just was not sustainable. My house went into foreclosure. Um, my cars went into repossession. My um, electricity, my brother-in-law, he's, he's passed on as well at this point. But my brother-in-law would rig my cable. He rigged my electricity and my water. Um, I mean, literally, we were living like straight counterfeit. <laughs> You know, when well, you're from the hood sometimes, Brett, I mean, you make it happen, right? Yeah. So, um, so we had all that stuff, and we're living in this beautiful subdivision, you know, and nobody really knows what's going on, and then we're fussing and fighting in the house and all of this. Uh, and, and so I was introduced to network marketing in the beginning of 2007 by an old college buddy of mine, and I went and I saw the presentation, and for me, I was... 500 bucks and I could do this? Good Lord, I don't have to have employees. I don't have to have payroll. I don't have to have insurance on these people. This is great. It's the best thing ever. So I signed up right away. And um, actually, I didn't have a horror story with network marketing. Our team did very well. Uh, and I did pretty good in that as uh, too. And I began presenting uh, every, every week along with two other ladies. We called ourselves the Wealth Angels. And we began presenting our opportunity uh, and we would travel different parts of the city and do this. We did photo shoots. I mean, the Wealth Angels were like the brand for what we were doing. And um, I, in 2008, I kind of got to a point, Grant, where I was getting burned out. I mean, I felt like and we're in Chicago, right? So that means when it's winter time, we're having to travel to go do a physical presentation somewhere and it's snow up to here. And then you get there and it's one person in the room. Right. And the one person in the room, based on the, the way that I understood the numbers, I mean, unless you're going to have a 100 percent sign up rate every time, if you got one person in the room, you can almost bet that person ain't signing up. <laughs> so it, we would get there and we would just be pissed uh, knowing that we were getting ready to sign up here for an hour and present. And then it just literally not turn out into a sale. Uh, so I began to want to look for other ways to duplicate myself. How could I present? And, and give it to my team and let them present it and show it to people without me having to be there. That's what led me to being online in 2008. Uh, and then I found Dagan Smith and uh, I was a complete newbie. This was like March 2008. A complete newbie, knew nothing about any of this social media stuff, my story marketing. I was a big fan of Dennis Carganilla and, and um, all those people back then. Uh, MySpace was the, the platform to be on. Facebook was just coming out like 2006, so it hadn't completely gotten to the point where it is now. Uh, so everybody was doing MySpace marketing, and um, I pretty much followed Dagan. He told me I needed three things, uh, and those three things were a blog, an autoresponder, and um, a lead capture page. And I understood those foundational things from the very beginning. He told me I needed to write an article every single day 
which is what I did. And on days that I get tired of writing articles, I would just do a video instead and um, begin to build that whole thing up. And then by um, 2000, later on that year, 2008, I got into another uh, system, I should say. Uh, and I did very well. I was a top female producer in that system, had the opportunity to speak at um, the first two uh, company events, live conferences, uh, international conferences for that company. And um, that's it's there where I met David Wood. Um, he was a number one producer, period. Uh, he had climbed to that. He was living in the van. Still, I mean, a lot of people question, does he live, really live in the van? Yeah, David was living in the van. This is 2009. <laughs> and um, uh, I remember when he came in, we didn't know who he was. And he just climbed at the leaderboards like, who is this guy? And um, he was doing well. He's with the company. And that company shut down on him. So he moved over to another company and um, did pretty good there. But it was kind of during that period of time that he and I would – talk on Skype a little bit and we were both at the, at the point where we were feeling a little bit of um, dis-ease uh, with what we were doing compared to how we felt others should be benefiting. We could see that we were kind of producing but David didn't work and so he could sit at his computer 20 hours a day if he wanted. Mm -hmm. I did this full time so same thing here. The average person has to go to work eight hours or whatever, come home, family, this, that. They may have two, three hours, and we knew they weren't going to be able to produce like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a little bit of tension in that area, and that's when he began, began to share some ideas with me about things that he wanted to do and you know, so on and so forth. And we fast forward a couple years, uh, and then we get to 2011, and then the birth of Empower emerged. And uh, he and David uh, Sharp shared it with me when we were at a company event we were speaking at uh, in October in Disney World. And um, they shared it with me. And when I got back home to, to Atlanta at that point, I literally signed up. I signed up. There was no website. There was no nothing. It was just really my belief in Dave and Dave that they actually cared about people and that, heck, if they were going to try it, it was worth a shot. You know, I knew they were good people and we didn't know everything. They didn't know everything. They know so much more now corporate wise, but yeah. I gave it a shot and um, that's where we are now. So now if we fast forward another year and a half. Um, you know, we've had a chance to meet and we hung out in Costa Rica. I remember that day. We were, in fact, it was because Rob Ford and his wife had a, had an accident yeah. with their yeah. son and uh, we were all having lunch, me, you, Ashley and their son and stuff like that. So um, it's been a phenomenal, you know, since 2008. Till now, it's been a phenomenal journey going from not knowing Jack to still not knowing as much as people think I know. It's just I know a couple things really good, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. and that's that's what I do. So that's my story, and, and now I'm here. Well, well, here's what I'm hearing: uh, success in college, right? You got a you got a master's. Nobody, very few people are able to do that. Um, even people who go to college, right? Not including the people who don't even go, right? Which was me. No, no school. <laughs> Forget school. Which sometimes I think is better. I mean, yeah. really, the more indoctrinated we are, the harder it is from an entrepreneurial perspective to accept direction and follow them. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, like I said, success in college, success in your career after school, uh, success in traditional network marketing offline, success online. So, the way I see it is you could probably, you, Tracy, could be successful in pr probably anything that you wanted to do, right? But what is different between everything you've done in the past? What is really different between everything you've done before Empower and Empower? What, what are the major? Well, the major, most important thing to me that's different is I'm actually witnessing. I'm an eyewitness to people actually having successes in their businesses that I know didn't experience that before. That was, the, that was the problem David Wood and I, we were having back in 2009 and 10, right? We were talking, well, people just aren't, they can't recruit, right? And we're trying to teach them how we recruit. And, and that seemed like the more that we taught them, the less they were able to do it. Uh, and and we, we battled with that. And here at Empower, you know, I've watched people that never sponsored anybody. And, you know, a deal that costs 250 bucks to get started sponsor someone that goes all the way up to the, you know, they have a $1,500 day. Yeah. Right? That is amazing to me. And, and it hasn't just happened once. It's not just happening with anybody I'm associated with. It's happening cross line. It's happening with people in different countries. It's happening with people with language barriers, with 
physical differences, people that are deaf, people that are blind. Mm -hmm. um, it's happening with people <clears throat> who've never had success in anything ever. It's happening with people that have always been successful. So for me to see the widespread of results that people are able to attain, that is the ultimate difference. Everything else was an uphill battle trying to get people to get it. And here, they get it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, forgot my question. <laughs> I had a question. I heard you say something. I was like, I'm going to ask her that. And then I lost it. <laughs> I should have wrote it down real quick. Um, so, so let me let me go with this. This week, okay, on t I think I believe it was Tuesday. I had my best day uh, online ever. Right, I, I had a three thousand dollars sell. Um, so that that was pretty awesome. Um, I'm just curious, what is your? I, I think you had like a while back a five thousand dollar day or something like that. Or was that your best day ever online? Or have you had? Well, back then, this was probably right after the first event in June yeah. here in Atlanta. Uh, right after that, I had a $4,800 day. So that may have been June, July of 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the amount I've had in a day um, anymore because, it, Grant, you know, it, the way our system is hard to tell sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't keep track of it per day like that. Um, manually, I keep track of things per week. Yeah. Um, and so what I can tell you is from a from a documented perspective, January 2013, which was just last month, was my best month ever. Um, and I made 67000 in the month of January. Holy smokies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I know it sounds crazy. Um, and it really sounds crazy because it's internet marketing. See, when I was in real estate, sixty-seven thousand grant ain't a big deal. I mean, we were doing about sixty to ninety thousand every month in real estate, right? Because you could close a deal, make thirty grand like that. But there was a lot of work. My business depended on whether the attorney did his job right, the realtor did their job right, the closing officer did their job right. Everybody, the sellers didn't bag out, the buyers didn't bag out, the financing was in place. There were so many moving parts that if we got to that closing table and we actually clo closed, I was relieved, mm -hmm. right? And and thank God I made this thirty, fifty thousand, whatever it was. Here, it's 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 literally no work compared to that. Yeah. No, I don't have to worry about if other people doing their job. I am concerned with my ACOR commitments, which I'm sure we'll probably talk about. I'm concerned with getting two sales a day, and I'm concerned with helping people understand the benefit of getting all in. Those are the three things that I focus on every day. And as a result, the income continues to grow. It's completely leveraged. I don't have to close a deal every time to make $67,000, right? Yeah. I don't. Um, so that in itself for me is life changing because I'm really only working maybe two to three hours a day on an empower business and other things like we're doing this, this isn't really empower business, right? But is it working? It could be right, but it's not an income producing activity. It's not generating a lead per se. Um, we're having a conversation and, and opening up and sharing some insight. Um, this to me ain't work, Grant. Yeah. It's fun, well, right? And the best part about doing stuff like this, and, and a lot of the things we do online, is we can take this video, and this video could work for us day in and day out yes. every day of the week. Yes. And we don't have to be there for it to do that. And that, that's, the, that's the power of automated systems. <laughs> How many hours were you used to putting in when you were doing your real estate business? Oh, God. I would get up in the morning, and, you know, my cousin Sherry, um, she's an empower, and yeah. um, she was actually my assistant. She worked for me during that time. Okay. And and she and so I'm saying that so that there is a reference point. Someone can document who's in empower that I am telling the absolute truth. Yep. She would come to my house this is before we moved to the office downtown. She would come to my house. I would be in the bed. They were supposed to be there at 8 a.m. I think or 8 or 9. I would be in the bed, a headscarf on. I would get out the bed, you know, get myself together, walk into the other room, go into the office. Maybe you know nine thirty, ten o'clock in the morning, and I literally would not leave that leave that office. I mean, she would leave around six, but I would literally not leave out of that office until ten, eleven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes twelve, just kind of depending on what was going on. Consistently, that was what my day was, mm -hmm. uh, and I was addicted to work, Grant, because when when your income is so dependent on the deal, right? Yeah. This one deal. 
you dedicate everything to it to make sure that it produces. Mm -hmm. And I, I became a workaholic essentially to sustain everything we had. You know, I had to pay my employees. I, I could not close a deal and, and not make payroll. You know, uh, I was obsessed literally with it, which is an anxiety issue that builds up inside of you. It's an always worry type of thing. Um, always a fear of losing everything if you don't get this stuff done. Mm -hmm. So I just always made sure I was doing it. So easy 12, 13, 14 hour days um, in the real estate business. Okay. So, you know, speaking of, you know, we're talking about how much time you were investing then compared to three, two to three hours now in Empower Network. Um, one of the things that I've really been getting involved in and, and focusing on in my own business since, especially Austin, I don't know, I had some mental block about outsourcing for some reason. Um, and in Austin, that those barriers completely fell. I came home, got on my computer, I got on Elance, and I just started creating jobs for things that I knew needed to be done in my business mm -hmm. that I needed to have done while I was at work because I still have a full-time job, right? Okay. Yes. Um, t tell me about, because, uh, you know, my experience with getting you on this, this um, uh, hangout, I had to go through your personal assistant who did all of your bidding, right? <laughs> Which is totally awesome, right? Yeah. Tell, tell me how you outsource, how you leverage other people's time for your business so that you can be more free and spend more time with your family. You know, I'm still growing in that area, Grant. Uh, right. You know who's a great advisor to me on this? Um, Ashley Wood, David's wife. Is she? Wow. Ashley is a, a great trusted source uh, for me when it comes down to outsourcing. I mean, she has mastered that thing and she's always, you know, she'll hear me talking about something and she'll go, no, what you need to do is just do this, 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 and this, and yeah. then you're done. I'm like, dang, Ash, you're right. I should do that. <laughs> um, so how I have it set up in my world is that I have um, Claire, you met Claire, and I told you, mm -hmm. so Claire is like my personal assistant. Claire is like, like the second me in a sense, okay? So when it comes down to scheduling um, appointments or getting my flights or you know booking things or anything that has to do with me being on a phone or talking to people about just day-to-day -day stuff, that's Claire, right? Um, I need some new luggage, for example, right? And, and matter of fact, me and Ashley were on a flight coming back from Austin, um, coming to Atlanta, and she had this bag and I'm like, that bag looks like the backpack that you had on in Austin. She goes, well, it is. It just connects to this, and then it becomes a roller bag, and then you can detach it and wear it as a backpack when you get where you're going. Mm -hmm. And I said, I need that. She said, oh, yeah, just have your assistant look it up. And I said, oh, yeah, great idea. Right. So Claire does all of that for me. Okay. Cool. I also have a marketing assistant. Mm -hmm. I don't expect Claire to do marketing. You know, um, she can do spreadsheets. She runs numbers for me. She makes phone calls to my uh, team members for me. If I need to send out cards to them and things of that sort, she does that. Uh, my marketing assistant, however, will do um, the syndication, let's say, of my content. Uh, we'll do the advertising that I want set up. A completely different person doing a completely different role. Uh, and then recently, my dad, I have my dad who's also an empower. My dad is an excellent, excellent uh, person on the phones, and um, I outsource the calling of new reps that start with our Empower business, right? So when a new person signs up, essentially this is what happens. A new person signs up, um, and then I don't really do anything. Claire goes into my account every day. She sees all the new people that signed up for that day. She sends them a welcome email. From there, the new person knows what to do based on that email. She then takes that list of people, let's say it's three or four people, she takes that list and she sends it over to um, the phone center, the call center that I use. Then the call center goes through and they call these people to welcome them, go through a, several questions with them. And then once they get in contact with someone, they send that information to my dad. Okay. Now, Grant, here's something worthy, noteworthy. They used to send the calls to me. Right, they would schedule a three-way with me, and that was cool at first. But then I realized I don't want to talk, yeah. <laughs> not yet. Right, I don't want to, um, and and so sometimes things would get things would get skewed, and then the appointments would get missed, and and I realized that that was because I really didn't want to do it. Um, so my dad now has stepped in for for me in that area, and now the call center sends the successful 
you know, connection call to him, and then he builds a little bit of a relationship with them. He speaks to them about the importance of upgrading. He speaks the importance of all the things that are necessary. And now this person has had two interactions with two different people that are associated with me without having to speak to me, but a personal touch is still there. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and so that for me works. So that means now once the person is, you know, integrated into what we're doing on the team. Um, I can leverage my time doing what I really like to do, which is the speaking part and the training part yep. uh, and the coaching people. So uh, that's how I use, you know, my my assistants to get stuff done. And I'm not I'm still working. I need to outsource more stuff still, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but I'm still getting over my workaholic addiction. So yeah. <laughs> you know, some things I'll look at Grant and I'll say, ah, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. You know? I'm working on it though. I know I need help. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, you know, the first step is admitting that you have a problem, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the, the, I'm, I'm telling you, for the people who are, are who are watching this, the recording or watching it live, you guys got to realize how viable that information is. The fact, one of the things that Tracy just said that really caught my attention and it's exactly where I'm at is she didn't want to do it she didn't want to make calls and that's why it wasn't happening if you find yourself avoiding something find somebody else to do it for you right uh, you know Tracy pays her dad Tracy pays Claire you know I go on Elance and I find people to do my stuff for three dollars an hour and the, the, you know the way I see it is if I the difference between what Tracy's probably doing she's probably spending a little bit more money on her outsourcing right than I am because I'm at a different level um, but I just want to, I want to point this out real quick, you know, because I'm, I'm willing to pay $3 an hour, I have to kind of train these people. I have to teach them what I want them to do. They don't already know. Um, but I'm willing to do that because if I spend, you know, a few hours of, you know, maybe creating a video to teach them what they need to do for me, you know, for $3 an hour, I could have, you know, four different outsourcers doing certain aspects of my business. By the time I get home from work, I've already had five to six hours invested into my business. What's left for me to do? Call new members. I love how Tracy said, you know, maybe there's three or four a day that, you know, Claire has to put through the system. <laughs> That's sick, man. You know, so <laughs> I might have, you know, two a week. <laughs> but, but that doesn't that doesn't matter because, I mean, uh, you know, when I say that with Empower Network, when I say, you know, I only had two a week, you know, I might have generated about 5,000 leads, you guys. But making one three thousand dollar sale just increased my lead value up by fifty cents a piece, yeah. which is huge. It's absolutely. And let's, let's just keep in mind too, Grant, that I mean, really, from a traditional network marketing standpoint, we're really taught to get two or three people a month. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? And and it's not sustainable at two to three people a month. And and in power, we're saying two to three, you know, two a day. Even if you're getting two to three a week. If you had two a week, that's two for that's eight a month, which means in, tradi in the traditional world, you're a superstar. Yeah, you're crushing it. You're crushing, <laughs> crushing it. it. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's funny while you're taking that drink of water. Um, while we were in the Austin event, uh, I think it was the last day, everything was over, I believe. Um, and you know, I was back there talking to Dave Wood and Dave Sharp in their um, in their VIP room backstage. And um, we were just talking about how the numbers that we talk and the way that we view things is so outlandish and far-fetched a lot of times that it's hard for people to grasp it. For example, you know, making $30,000 a month in Empower is almost like beginner. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like thirty thousand a month. You need to step your game up, sister. Like you're not you're not cutting it. You know, um, whereas. In real life, thirty thousand dollars a month is the bomb, and in in reality, it is. It is. But my point is that Empower challenges all of us yeah. to not get complacent. Now, if all you want is thirty thousand dollars a month, then by God, do that. Be happy with mm -hmm. it. Yep. But if you have sites greater than that, and you want a million dollars, you know, in a year or two million dollars in a year. Just like any other multimillionaire could have two, three, four million in a year. These athletes have 10, 20 million in a year. I mean, oh, yeah. it's not like the numbers don't exist yep. uh, or that people aren't making it. But it helps us to stretch and realize that we could do it too, right? Mm -hmm. And if you want to be a millionaire or do it in a, in a, calendar, a calendar year, you know, 30,000 
ain't gonna get it. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so you gotta step it up. <laughs> exactly. You know, it, it, it's crazy too, and I, I totally agree with you. The the perception of what money is, or I should say, how Empower Network has transformed my perception of money is unbelievable. I, I look yeah. at you know, for example, my I grew up with a family that was involved in network marketing, right? My my mom, my aunt, my grandma watched presentations while I, when I was ten years old from the balcony looking over with, a, you know, fifty people in my mom's living room and kitchen area and all this. And the top income earner in this company, I think it's like almost twenty years old. This this particular MLM, unbelievable MLM. I I, I think it's a great company. It's, it really absolutely is. The products, I, I still have them in my cupboard. But the point I'm making is the top earner in this particular MLM is just over $100,000 a month. And this is a 20-year-old business, oh. right? We're, we're just over a year old, and we have people who are doing that and more. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Tracy That's will be... crazy. Yeah. Tra Tracy will be doing that and more, you know? in the next couple of months, I bet, you know? That is the goal. That is the goal. You know, Dave Wood is is my mentor, and he said, listen, you are a quarter million a month girl, Absolutely. you know? And it's, it's you know, being completely transparent, you know, I don't claim that, that I fully see, you know, I'm working on wrapping my mind around that right now. And mm -hmm. I know because for whatever reason, I'm struggling with seeing 250000 in a month, it's... Yeah delaying the manifestation of it, right? I understand that. It's not because I'm not blogging, it ain't because of this, it's because mentally I haven't wrapped my, my mind around my universe of that being so. Yeah. Uh, so I work on that, you know, I listen to my audios, I read, uh, I work on my mindset all the time and it's always growing and constantly stretching. You know, sixty-seven thousand dollars a month is is awesome but just prior to that i mean i was talking to my cousin sherry on the phone and i was telling her maybe it must have been november or december and i told her i said you know what sherry i'm i feel like i'm kind of stuck uh i feel like i'm stuck around this forty fifty thousand dollar a month thing because i know it sounds weird that i'm saying that but i, I feel stuck you know and i want to be able to be at a hundred thousand dollars a month and then boom january hit it over you know yeah. Um, so now I've got that under my belt and now I can keep growing, keep stretching. So it's a process for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> One of the things that, that you, you mentioned was setting goals and your goal is to hit that $250,000 a month, uh, business. Now in the scope of it, looking at it, you know, making $80,000 to say 80 or $70,000 in a month to this jump into to a quarter of a million, absolutely possible. What, when you think about setting goals and let, let's do it from two different pers or from a perspective of somebody who's not at the level you're at, let's say they're making three or four or maybe even a thousand dollars a month. What is a realistic goal and can you be too unrealistic, right? Is there, is there a point where you set a goal that's so lofty that it doesn't make sense or is, is that a fallacy? Should you set goals that are just so sky high? You know, talk, talk about that a little bit. Um, person, and then this is my opinion. Okay, um, I think that goals should be set that are a little bit out of reach because it makes you stretch. But the reality is that if you don't believe that it's possible, then you know you can't attract it to you because you're constantly be contradicting mm -hmm. it in your mind, right? So let's say you're just getting started, and you know you don't have any skill whatsoever. Zero. You know nothing about internet marketing. You are just not getting a computer, right? Mm -hmm. You hate talking to people. You hate writing. You hate videoing. You hate you hate everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you want to get into Empower because you believe that you could make ten thousand a month here, which you can very easily. Um, but you want to do it in your first thirty days. Mm -hmm. Well, making the ten thousand is not the goal. That's the issue. It's you want to do it in thirty days. And you want to do it in 30 days without first giving yourself a chance to learn any skills. Mm -hmm. And and we get paid for skill set, essentially, right? We get paid to be able to solve. The more people's problems we're able to solve, the more money we'll make. That's the entrepreneurial way, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't figured out a way to bridge the gap through your skill set with what people's problems are and how your solution helps them so that you can be paid in the middle, mm -hmm. then the money part is not the issue. It's, it's your reality about what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So I think that goal should be set not with a time frame. And okay. I know we've all been taught 
that we should set them, oh, you know, I want to have it by this time or have it by this day or whatever. And I won't lie and say that I've never done that. You know, um, I, I do set goals with time frames sometimes depending on what it is. But generally, I try not to set a time frame because the time frame is based on your belief level. Mm -hmm. If you believe that you're going to get, you know, $10,000 no matter what, then it doesn't matter what the time frame is, right? Like athletes say, I'm going to win a Super Bowl before I retire, right? Mm -hmm. Well, who's to say it's going to be the first year, the second year, the third? We don't know what year it's going to be. Um, you've got, what's the man um, with the, the, with the um, that just won Super Bowl that's retiring? Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis, yeah. Right? I mean, all these years, right? And his final year, yeah. and, and what wow. he's it, final year, he wins the Super Bowl. Yep. But what if he had a said, well, if I don't win a Super Bowl in my first three years, I'm quitting the NFL. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. So same thing here. You know, set your goal for what you want, but be willing to take as long as it takes for you to get it, mm -hmm. to get there. Don't put a time limit on yourself with what's possible because there is some transformation mentally here that mm -hmm. needs to happen before you're even ready to receive things on a higher level absolutely you, you're 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 pre when as, as far as I'm concerned when it comes to me you're preaching to the choir because that is something that I've realized in myself you know when I first got online I looked at where I wanted to go and it was like oh I want to make you know well first to, to be honest it was ten thousand dollars a month I was gonna be rich at ten thousand dollars a month absolutely. Right? <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't seem like a whole lot right now but <laughs> but um, you know, and and I remember thinking, I'm going to get rich in, in, in the next 30 days. Or I'm going to get rich in 60 days. And what ended up happening is I didn't. I didn't hit that $10,000 mark in 30 days. What, what's the point I'm trying to make? Let me think about this for a second. I, I set this goal. I didn't achieve it. I forgot my point. Dang it. <laughs> no, it's cool because essentially what happens when you set these goals like this, um, that's really not fair to you. You know, for example, I don't know, I don't have the skills yet, but I want to make 10,000 in 30 days. You'll set, you'll set yourself up for failure essentially yes. because you don't believe that you can really do it. You just want to do it because of some external reason. So then if you don't accomplish it, then you beat up on yourself or you find excuses as to why it's not meant for you or this yes. doesn't work. Yeah. And it, and it decreases motivation, right? As really? opposed to enhancing your inspiration about it. Um, and then eventually you do that enough, you're in a downward spiral and then you quit yep. um, as opposed to being committed to the journey, not yep. committed to, you know, yep the next step in the journey, you know, be committed to the overall journey of making it, not how long it's going to take you to get to the very first oasis point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, you said stay committed to the journey, right? And, and that's exactly what this process has been for you. It's been for yeah. me. What action steps? Okay. When let's just say somebody for today, they get involved in empower network. They set a goal, but it's not set on a time frame. It's just set on when this happens, right? And we know that if we set a goal and we, we strive for it long enough, it will be different for everybody else, for everybody, but you'll hit it. You'll, you'll eventually get there. How do you stay committed? What action steps? What do I do? Or what is the, the people, the viewers watching this uh, recording or live right now, what do they do to make sure that they reach their goals and they stay motivated through the process to see the, that, that goal be come to fruition? Yeah. Um, it's going to be different. I mean, in Empower, we have some very core commitment. We have some, you know, very um, precise core commitments. Um, but but these core commitments come from entrepreneurial commitments, period, right? I mean, they've been brought to being eight as far as what we recognize them as. But, but I don't think I know any seven-figure earner or any eight-figure earner that doesn't embrace these commitments at any level in their businesses, mm -hmm. right? Number one being, because we're talking about staying in the course, right? Yeah. Well, when when you first set your goal, you got to have the vision for it, right? And if you can see yourself with it down there, whenever mm -hmm. out there it's going to happen, it's, it's going to happen, mm -hmm. um, then it's like a radio signal. You have got to keep your dial on that thing because if you turn your dial a little bit, it, it sounds fuzzy. 
Mm-hmm. Do you know? So yep. you've got to, number one, stay focused on what it is that you want. And that's why that thing that you want has got to be valuable to you. So for example, you can't say, oh, well, I just want to be comfortable. Right. That's a big one I hear a lot. Well, you know, well, why do you want to make $10,000 a month? Oh, well, because I just want to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. And that's probably an X, right? You're probably not going to stay long with this because you're going to be uncomfortable during the process of getting comfortable. And if your goal is to be comfortable and you experience any discomfort, you'll quit. Mm-hmm. Yep. You'll quit. Uh, so as opposed to, well, you know what? I want to make sure that I have, you know, the funds to send my child to college by the time they go, right? Maybe that might be five or six years from now. Well, now, if you're committed to that, right, and you know that unless you make this thing happen, your kid ain't going, mm-hmm. well, then maybe that's a little bit more of a motivation, a little bit more fire under your behind to make it happen. So that reasoning that you have, that why we call it, the why that makes you cry, um, that thing has got to be serious. And it's got to be enough that when you get up in the morning, you can't live if you knew you didn't make that happen. Yep. You cannot live. If you could not live knowing that you had a chance to make sure that your kid's education was paid for and then you quit and then it wasn't paid for, if that brings that much discomfort to you that you didn't fulfill that, then that is something that you'll probably work for. Absolutely. That's number one. You got to have something that's going to pull you towards that thing no matter what you experience uh, along the way. The second thing is that even though you might have the focus and the attention on that, We've I constantly talk about the mindset. You you have to keep training your mind um, with information and um, data. I should say it's like you know it's our CPU with data that is um, co- cohesive with that which we want. Right. Yeah. So if I want to make X amount of dollars in order to send my kids to school in five years. Well, then I can't constantly be looking at the news every day where somebody is getting shot, killed, robbed, this, that. What's going to happen in the world is going to happen in the world. It just means that you don't need to inundate yourself with that for an hour with that space because that space is valuable and it needs to be um, utilized with things that are more indicative of where you're trying to go. So listening to your your audios that are mind and power building audios um success principles i mean right here on my desk i've got you know several books i mean i've got this one book here it's called the seven spiritual laws of success right and it just sits i mean i've got a whole book two bookcases over there with stuff but these i sit on my desk hold on i'll show you this one um here's one how to get everything you ever wanted right i mean these are things that i keep within reach Right? Because we all have days and times where people will piss you off, Grant. You know, I had a guy that emailed me the other day, and I was literally so upset for like three minutes. I had to bring it down because he emailed me and said he joined last week, and he didn't want, he wanted me to show him the money, and he wanted me to do it without, don't send him back to those eight core commitments. Don't send him to another training. He don't want any more assignments. He doesn't want to be told this, 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 and this because the leaders, all we want to do is take people's money and not show them really how to make the money. And he's going into debt and this and this and this. And until I can show him the money and keep in mind, he is, he's offering me a chance to be of integrity to help him, right? <laughs> He's offering me that opportunity to do that, right? But don't do this. Don't send me here. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah. And I sent him an email back very simply, and I said, well, you know what? I don't think this is going to work. I don't think we're a good fit. I would much rather you go ahead and cancel your account now because, yeah. number one, I'm not taking anything from you, right? If anything, you may have paid $25, and if you joined last week, I don't even have your $25 yet, yeah. Right. Then the delay of payment. <laughs> I mean, yeah. have your $25. So anything that I've earned had zero to do with your input. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I don't owe you anything. And if you're going to tell the coach what you're not going to do, then it's not a good fit. Game over. It's yeah. game over. I said, yeah. there's just no way if you were new to a basketball team, you wouldn't tell the coach, look, look, until you win me a championship, <laughs> I ain't coming to no more practices. I'm not going to the weight room. And I'm not doing any more drills. I'm sick of it. Don't make me do any of that stuff because until you can produce a championship ring and a trophy for me, I ain't willing to do it. Yep. And to me, it's oxymoronic 
right? So I got kind of aggravated, and I had to kind of come back to this and this, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> because I almost went down the path of, who did he think he's talking to? Yep. This, <laughs> you know, and I had to get back to my spiritual laws of success and understand that everyone, they're not filling their brains with what I'm filling my brain with. Yep, that's right. And he's not ready. So yep. staying, staying committed mentally with the things that you need to help propel you towards what you want. Then you actually need a, a regimen of, of, a, of actions that you're going to do. And that actions could be very different, Grant, because, you know, my skill set may be very different than your skill set. And I always ask people, what are your two biggest strengths? And I don't mean in terms of marketing. I mean, as a human being, what do you feel that your two biggest strengths are? And the reason I ask for two, uh, really one, no more than two, is because nobody is good at five things. Mm -hmm. I mean, expert status in five things. They just aren't. And if you think that you are, you're kidding yourself. There's no billionaire or multi multi-millionaire that is very good at five things. Mm -hmm. They're usually good at one thing, maybe two things, right? I love Beyonce. What is she good at? Singing, <laughs> you know, dancing. <Yeah. laughs> and, and as a result of those two, you know, she's running a business, mm -hmm. right? But really, it's entertaining. That's what she's good at doing. One thing, entertaining. Yep. Uh, and she's been a way to been able to kind of create a, a empire around herself around the one thing she's good at entertaining. Uh, so understanding that your t one two biggest strengths, you should build your regimen around that. For me, I said it's speaking and training. So if I could spend, if I could outsource everything else in the world and spend ninety nine percent of my time doing something, what would that something be? I choose. Well, that would be speaking like we're doing here or training. Everything else needs to get outsourced. How quickly you outsource it and who you outsource to can vary. Mm -hmm. But your things that you do should be based around what you like to do because that's the energy and the motivation to stay focused on that goal. So for me, um, I like doing videos, right? Because it allows me to speak. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can put together, a, actually I'll write a blog post, right? Because I can think of concepts in my head and I can write it out. I'll have my marketing assistant create a PowerPoint of that blog post. And then I'll take that PowerPoint and I'll speak over it with like a voiceover and go through the PowerPoint. And that's a video. The video doesn't have to be me physically with my hair having to be done, camera on Tracy. It could be the screen capture of my presentation, right? With a picture of me in the bottom left or bottom right hand corner. Mm -hmm. And then I can speak over it and I can take that video and I can send it back to her and then she can syndicate it accordingly through all the various channels. That is a task that I'm going to do every day, right? Mm -hmm. For me, because I need to get a video out and a blog post out every day, mm -hmm. right? Now, honestly, there are times where I don't get a chance to do it, right? I'm not a hundred percent not a bot, right? But I'm committed to making sure that if I don't get it done today, that I'm for damn sure going to get it done tomorrow. It doesn't drag on with five days it doesn't get done, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's creating that blog post and that video every single day, right? Mm -hmm. That one thing. Then the next thing is making sure literally that um, my I'm emailing my list every single day. Every single day, I'm sending out information to the people that have opted in through whatever way they've opted in. They stay in contact with me. I'm building a rapport with them as often as I possibly can every single day. So to me, that's like speaking again, right? I'm speaking virtually via an email or sending them a link that helps them to go see a video or something. I'm communicating with people in that way. And so for me, those are my two biggest things I do no matter what. There are other things, but as far as a core task that needs to get done, it's getting that blog post done, getting that video done, getting that stuff syndicated and emailing my list, that new information, and maybe something else later that day, every single day. Yep. So the task can vary on the person. Some people absolutely love to, you know, write. So maybe it might be more the writing aspect. Some people love to, you know, be outside. So maybe they want to do some footage and some things outside. I don't know. Um, but you've got to have some tasks that are literally income producing tasks. You know, marketing. When I say marketing, I mean maybe even advertising. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, running some paid ads. It's not critical. I mean, I've pretty much built my entire Empower business without paid advertising. I do some. 
You know, I mean, I might put a few thousand dollars here and there, but I, I'm not as consistent as, let's say, a Tony Rush, mm -hmm. right, with paid advertising. So I can recognize the variance right there, right? I could say, well, look, I know Tony is putting X amount of dollars per month into paid advertising. So yep. his time is really freed up yep. to go do what he wants. And then as long as he keeps his email marketing going, he can leverage better, mm -hmm. right? Me, I'm not spending as much as Tony in paid advertising, but you know, I'm more into the social media. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to try to be like Tony. I'm going to be like Tracy. Mm -hmm. And it might be different. I might have to work an extra 30 minutes <laughs> yep. because I'm doing social stuff, Facebook communicating stuff. Um, but that's my choice because yep. I want to work within my, my core strengths. So th those would be, I mean, if we had to wrap it up, Grant, that would be number one, having the focused goal, the why needs to be strong enough to focus on. Number two, you have to keep your mind and stuff together, tweaked with things that help you go towards that. And then you need to have some very specific IPAs, income producing activities that you do every single day without fail uh, in order to, to bring that goal into fruition for yourself. Absolutely. One of, one of the things I heard David Wood say uh, in an audio or something, because I do listen to the audios, <laughs> um, he said that he's good, what he's good at, or what he does, he, he how did he say it? It's, a, it's an inch wide and a mile deep. Yep. And it, mean, meaning that he, what, he takes what he's good at, he's mastered it, okay? Yep. Like, like you, Tracy, he's mastered the ability to get in front of a camera and speak. You know, he's mastered the ability to train uh, his team, right? Which is the reason why he probably has the, one of the biggest teams in, well, he definitely has the biggest team online, I would, I would probably bet. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, an inch wide, mile deep, focus on the things you're good at, everything else should be outsourced, everything. Okay. Um, because the things that you're not good at, most likely you're not going to end up doing, and they okay. need to be done, you know? Right. So, um, I want to go into, uh, you know, and I know it's funny because to get you to get on this, to get you to get on a hangout with me, I told you that this is going to be a 10-minute interview. <laughs> I know that wasn't going to happen. I need, well, I'm not longer than 10 minutes, Grant. <laughs> I, I thought, well, if I tell her it'll be 10 minutes, you know, maybe my chances of her saying yes will be higher. It obviously worked, but we've been on here for like an hour, so woohoo! Thank you, That's Tracy. Um, I appreciate it a lot. But I want to, obviously, you know, what, I was watching the 15K. I actually didn't get to watch the live recording of your 15K tr uh, training on creating a dynasty, not just a team. However, last night I went on, watched about an hour of it before I thought, you know what, I got to get up early. I'm going to go to bed early and uh, wait on it. But I was totally blown away. Like you're, you're, I've watched a lot of trainings uh, that you've done, um, obviously, because I've been following you for a while as well as a lot of other leaders. You, you, you knocked it out of the park. I mean, it was absolutely, I can't wait to, after this, I'm going to go watch the other half, right? Yeah. Um, but un unbelievable training. And, and what, like I said, it was about creating a, uh, creating a dynasty at your team and, and building culture, camaraderie. We kind of, I kind of hit on that in the very beginning of this um, hangout. I, I kind of want to know what you do or without going into so much detail, because obviously if somebody really wants to know how to build a big team, a big successful team, that'll last forever. They need to go by the 15 K and watch that webinar. I think it's like webinar seven or something. What do you do to motivate such a large amount of people being that you're only one person? You know, how do you manage such a large team? Um, getting over the control uh, factor, right? Um, I was a boss before, right? Mm -hmm. And, and being the boss, uh, you take on a role of, well, either you do it or you get fired essentially, right? It's, or you don't get paid, right? Mm -hmm. And and that is not that I um, purposely instilled fear, but just uh, that work relationship, right? People, if they're not doing their passion, they're working for the money, period, at any job. It just is what it is. Mm -hmm. And and it's the fear of not getting the money is what motivates the people to go, right? So it's a fear-based um, relationship. And in, in our industry, we don't have that type of power over people, <laughs> yeah. right? You can, I can't stop somebody's paycheck because they don't get on a webinar or they didn't do the assignment or the eight core. It's, it's not that type of deal. So mm -hmm. you've got to find ways to inspire people to take the action that they want to take. And I essentially do that initially by involving people. I mean, Danny Johnson is a great person. I, I studied years 
from. And she has a form that's called Expose, Involve, and Upgrade. And it's more of a traditional network marketing training, but essentially the idea is that you expose someone to your opportunity, right? So we do that through marketing. Then somebody joins in power. Now, when they join in power, we have to involve them. Well, how do we involve them? Well, we've got to empower our calls on Mondays. We've got um, on our team, we've got a six-figure income club call on Tuesdays. We've got a uh, all-in uh, hosted Google Hangout we do on Wednesdays. The redo of the 15K right now. So everybody that's in at least up to the 15K, they're involved in maybe watching it live on that Thursday. We are an events-based company, so then there's an event that's happening every every 90 days or so, right? Um, Dave and Dave will do random live streams and invite people to get on. It's a consistent process of involving people in what we have. Now, when you do that aggressively enough and you can do it right, people will do the third step, the upgrade, on their own. Yeah. Right. They'll upgrade on their own. And so my goal really only ever is to expose and involve. OK. Expose and involve. And if I can expose enough people to what we have, that increases my signups. And if I can involve those people as often as possible and tap into the things that they find valuable, that being around this environment and this community, they will decide that upgrading is the best thing for them on their own. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and so that's that's pretty much what I do. And I've been able to leverage um, leaders. So I don't I didn't start off my empower team wanting to do everything. Right. Uh, I knew it was going to be impossible in my mind. When I first started, I believed that this was going to be big. Mm -hmm. I just believed it. And because I believed it, I set my structure of my team, you know, like like a business an infrastructure. Right. You get all, you get a 20 line phone system mm -hmm. when you first move into the space. Because you anticipate having, you know, 50 people needing phones. You know what I'm saying? So you start off that way. I anticipated having a large group. So I started off with setting up a leadership council, right? Uh, and say, okay, look, if I could have this group of people work side by side with me and they have some responsibility, just like I have responsibility, most people don't quit when they have a responsibility to something. You're, if I invite you to my party and I say, hey, Grant, could you bring the chips? Yeah. Dang, you can't not come. <laughs> there won't be no chips. <laughs> so it's kind of that. It's kind of that, right? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. I start off with that, involving people on my team and yeah. listening and not having to be a control freak. Mm -hmm. And um, taking other people's ideas and us creating things out of them and things that we liked as a group, we made it happen. Things that we didn't think was so important, we put it to the back burner. And allowing people to have a voice, um, allowing people to share their expertise, that I think we've done extremely well. I don't have to go on our Facebook group and be the only person that's giving coaching advice or advising people about how to get something done. We've created an environment where people feel good and feel free with sharing the information that they have. And it could be right, it could be wrong. It's not about right or wrong. It's not about a judgment. It's about giving people the ability to communicate in a forum that allows them to provide value to others without Tracy having to be the dictator about whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I see something that needs a little correction, then I'll make a correction. You know, it's, not, it's okay without beating the person over the head. Uh, yeah. But if it's cool, I don't need to go in there and say, yeah, I agree with, with Grant and then type retype everything you just said. It's yeah. totally great. <laughs> he handled it, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and being OK with not having to be the boss. Mm -hmm. That is a big deal. And I think that's what's been able to or that's what's allowed our team to flourish in that way. And people feel a sense of belonging mm -hmm. to it because of it. So that's what I would say. Absolutely. Did you did you expect you said that you um you knew Empower Network was going to be big, but did you yeah. expect it to be this big? No, not this big so fast. That's what I meant about, we talked about the time, right? Yeah. You don't put the time limit on it. I knew, I knew because of David Wood that his vision on things are, is so huge. Yeah, absolutely. That even I at times have to sit back and I'm like, okay, <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> Right. Like I can't even fathom what he's saying sometimes. Um, but I knew his vision in, in him being a, a visionary. I knew he could see things. Right. Um, and I trusted that he could see it clearly. Uh, I didn't know that things would manifest as fast yeah. as they did. I think that that happened, Grant, 
because when you know people when it's two or more gathered, right? When when you have David Wood and then you got David Sharp and then you've got a front line of leaders that they've you know personally sponsored that buy into the vision mm -hmm. that speeds up the manifestation process. Absolutely. I personally think it's because we believed right collectively whether it was a small group at first that expanded to a larger group there was yeah. enough energy momentum of belief in that idea yeah. that it took on a faster pace than Absolutely. what was expected um, and as a result it's been able to help change you know lives sooner mm -hmm. than the average three to five year plan yeah. and I think that that's what makes some part of it is what makes empower attractive is that people can actually attain goals here sooner than elsewhere. Yep. You can still attain it elsewhere. It's not the issue. I mean, there are people in traditional MLMs that are doing it every day. The issue is that the, uh, the rest of the people haven't done it yet. Yep. <laughs> and we're saying, well, isn't it time? Isn't it time that yep. you can manifest what you want to? Here you can. Absolutely. The, you guys, the, the vision is so big at Empower Network that you know, you should probably just take a moment and click the button below this video, honestly, yes. and and fill out the join page. I mean, there's there's no greater gift. I've heard Dave Sharp say this a bunch of times. There's no greater gift you can give yourself than the gift of getting started. It's absolutely yes. the best thing you could do for yourself, and you should do that right now. Um, so, so Tracy, I, I'm going to let you, let's see, I think I had a question that I wanted to ask you. I want to make sure that I did. Maybe I did ask all my questions. I guess I guess what I'll ha we'll do is we'll we'll end it here because this has been like one of the most value packed hours <laughs> that I've ever been involved with, and I'm just so so thankful and grateful to be to be here in this moment right now. Um, you know, with you offering this this knowledge. I mean, you're dropping knowledge, right? It's just it's beautiful, <laughs> and, and, and I, sh I should say that a lot of the stuff that Tracy's discussing that I've asked her to talk about is kind of next level stuff. I mean, it's, it's a little bit beyond, a little bit beyond just getting started because she's at a next, she's at the next level, right? She's there, uh, and moving fast to where she wants to go. So I guess before we end the, the hangout, let's just, let's just talk real quickly about what a brand new person needs to do, what it's going to be like when they make a decision to get started and you know, their very first steps, um, that they should, you know, for, for, for someone who has no clue what they're doing, and we have touched on this a little bit, but somebody who's brand new, never made money online, maybe they've never joined anything online, or maybe they've joined a million things and they failed miserably. I've met a lot of people on my team who are making money with Empower Network who never made money in anything else online. Yeah. And I think it has a lot to do with the eight core commitments, I'll be honest, because uh, let, let's be honest. I mean, one of the things that Tracy said is you have to change your belief level, right? So... Um, before she answers that, that, that previous question, I want to hit on this real quick. Three of our core commitments are read daily, listen to audios daily, and go to the events. And let me tell you something. I haven't always read daily, but I have tried, right? I got, I got books <laughs> like this, right? Yeah. Uh, I've got The Ultimate Sales Letter, Crush It, Dave Ramsey's Entre Leadership, and Visions is my, I do. Um, I, can, I think I got a couple of books over there. The Bible, of course, I read that too. Um, so, so reading, I, I try to read daily, I try to listen to audio daily, but one of the things that I have not failed, not even a little bit yet, is going to the events. I've been to every event, Atlanta, San Diego, Costa Rica, uh, uh, Austin. Okay. I come back home renewed, refreshed, and I have a new vision, a bigger vision, and I reach bigger goals. Uh, you know, I haven't made a, I've owned the, the Costa Rica master's course all the way from the beginning back when we first launched it or first, you know, released it to the marketplace. You were there in the creation of it. I was there at the creation, <laughs> but it wasn't until I came back from Austin that I had it within me. I had a major transformation, uh, and I'll, I'll touch on that in just a second, that now I've made my first Costa Rica master sale. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tracy for all the network since I've been able to see her personally uh, live and in person, you know, at the events in Costa Rica and all this stuff. I've seen how her team operates. I've seen how they have how she uh, brings them together as one.
process and you play the battle with I think you'd agree, is your ability to build a team, uh, bring people together. And when I was in Austin, I've always I've always seen that. I've always looked at Tracy. I've heard you preach the preach it. You know that it's about your team. It's about their success. It's about their goals and their vision. And your vision has to be big enough for theirs. And da 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 da. But I've never been able to feel it deep inside my soul. Not real to me. Right. The belief. I I, I saw it on the outside on the subconscious level. Right. Or on, on the conscious level that that's what I needed to to have. I needed to. I needed to see things differently from a perspective of my team, my members versus myself. And when I was at that event, there was a moment without going into too much detail where where I was standing there and we were going through a a process of visualization and in an instant, I mean, absolutely in an instant in Austin, all of a sudden I saw 10 members of my team wearing red lanyards. And it was like, for whatever reason, that mental image transformed. It's giving me chills. It makes me want to cry. I realize that my team's success, my team's goals are far greater than mine. They're more important in that my success, my income, my results are just a byproduct. I couldn't get there mentally. Oh, Grant, you're freezing up on me a little bit. Tell Uh-oh. me if it gets better here. Okay, I can see you and hear you again. Okay, <laughs> where did you did you miss much of what I said? Um, or just in the, just a second. Well, now I see you moving, but are you drinking water right now? Okay, <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> I think it's cool. I heard the part where you were saying that um, you have to change your belief, and that you saw your team members. You saw ten of them with red lanyards yeah. and. Then it kind of froze up, and I didn't get the rest. Yeah, I was just in a nutshell. When I saw that image in my mind in Austin, I could, it was like I was saying to myself in my mind's mind's eye, I was watching these walls come tumbling down. I mean, mm-hmm. just falling down. This mental wall of getting to that place fell right, mm-hmm. and I was like, just I was overwhelmed with mm-hmm. with gratitude because I was so thin. I knew that that was, I needed it. Yeah. I knew that I had to get to that place. And because of Austin, I got there. You know, yes. my belief totally transformed. Uh, and, and when I say belief, it was it was going from the belief of, I need this. I need to make money. I need more leads. I need more traffic. I need bigger success. To, my team needs more money. My team needs more success. My team needs to reach their goals. Yes. And this is just a byproduct, and it'll just happen naturally over time because of yes. right here. And um, I'm just, ugh, unbelievable. So. I guess I guess with that I'll, I'll let you kind of g- give any last thoughts. Like I said before, I kind of got into that story. What does a new person need to do? How do they change their belief? We kind of discussed that, but just just real quick, what does the person that's brand new need to do right now after they click the button and join? What's next for them? Well, you know, the most important thing. I mean, I think before we actually went live. Um, you asked me a question which is similar to this like what does a person need to do in order to make five thousand dollars or something like that was that like, was it in 30 yeah, days yeah. Or what, what is the, what does a brand new person do no experience no real marketing budget um, do what do they need to do or what would you do Tracy to go from zero to five thousand dollars a month in 30 days um, here's here's what I, I would do and it's gonna be Uh, a stretch of mind, a stretch of thought for many because many people are stuck focusing on what they don't have, okay, Mm -hmm. as opposed to asking the question, how do I get it, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, Here's here's something I learned, and I learned it from Vic. Vic is a gentleman that joined our business um, somewhere in December, and within his first 20 days or 29 days, whatever, the man generated um, over $700,000, okay? (laughs) Okay, now that I'm back. All right, so when we got to the Austin event and we were in, uh, we had a speaker's training. And that was the first time I'd ever seen and met Vic live in person. Didn't even know who he was until, you know, he came into Empower. And I, you know, asked myself, well, you know, Vic, what is it that, that you did? I mean, now let me frame this. Vic does have experience, okay? He's been doing online marketing for some time. He has uh, a training 
you know, platform and program where he's been coaching people on how to make money online, things like that. So he's not coming from an inexperienced level. But that's our, those are the people that you want to ask these types of questions to, right? The people that have the experience. And so my question to him was, well, Vic, how did you go from zero and empower? to over $700,000 in like 20 something days. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know, it's really, really, really very simple. He said, the number one thing was that I got all in right away. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that when people here go all in, instantly they think about the product that they can't afford right now and why that them not being all in is excuse enough to not be all in. Okay. Mm -hmm. In which it's not an ex it's not acceptable to 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 bow down to the fact that you don't have it. What needs to happen is you have to begin to ask yourselves the questions that will produce the results you want, which is how can I? How what it got? Show me the way, right? For whatever way that you ask for what you need in life, you need to start asking the question: How do I point me in the right direction? How can I manifest this? I deserve to be all in, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why Vic said number one is to get all in is because if your goal is to make money in Empower, okay, if you're just a customer and you want to use it as a blogging platform, this may not be your focus, okay? And that's okay. We have customers and we have affiliates. But if you're an affiliate where you actually want to produce a substantial income, and let's just start at $5,000 a month, mm -hmm. well, then you've got to be set up properly to earn the maximum amount of commissions possible. When you say that you want to make $5,000 a month and you're only at the $25 level, you're going to build more anxiety because subconsciously you know you got to sell your ass off at 25. How many $25 sales does one need to have to make $5,000? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Right? And we just talked earlier about the average person from a network marketing perspective, if they're even were ever, ever in network marketing, was no more than three people a month. Yep. Right? And if you're bringing three people a month mentality to $5,000 a month over here, Mm -hmm. and you're only at $25, you can't equip your brain. is like, that doesn't make sense. Hello. Yeah, exactly. And you can't conceive it. Therefore, you feel that it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Whereas what Vic is saying to us is if you are positioned financially, do whatever you have to do. And I am in no way saying that if you don't physically have it in your bank account, that you, you know, do something unethical or you go rob or hurt or kill or steal. What I'm saying is that there are things around you. I've had team members that actually pawn a title to their car. Right. I have I have team members that have gone to their garage, been realistic about the crap that's in it, and had a garage sale. Yep. Right. I've had people that have said, you know what? I really don't use this or need this. I can sell this on eBay. OK, yep. there are very reasonable and ethical ways to generate the funds that you need that are in alignment with your morals. OK, uh, and where you feel good about doing it. And that's what I'm encouraging, that you look around yourself and say, you know, what am I willing to part with so that I can gain something else? So that's number one, you must do, even if you're not all in right now, you must be on the track to doing whatever you need to do to financially position yourself to get all in, okay? That's number one. Now, once you do that, once you're all in, all you need to do really is get one all in sale a month. Mm -hmm. One all in sale a month grant. Yep. Right? Because that's essentially like five grand or something like that. Now, the first one that you ever get in life is going to pretty much reimburse you for your initial investments. Okay? So that's going to be a break even point for the most part. So then the next month, you'll get a second one. And the way that our pay plan works, those sales would pass up to your sponsor more than likely. It's not going to be 100% the way it works that way. But ideally, if you bought in, brought in one person that went all in, the first time ever, you would break even. The second time, you would pass those sales up. But by the third month, let's say you only did this one time a month, that third time that you made an all-in sale, you would be in profit like five grand. Yep. Right? And so is it hard to make 5000 a month if you're all in? The answer is no. It's yep. so super simple that if you just expose enough people and in 
involve the people in what we're doing, Dave and Dave will upgrade the people without you even having to be there. Just get the email out to your list, to your contacts, to your warm market, whoever. Mm -hmm. They will get on if it's of interest, and they will be compelled enough if they see the vision to click the button. Mm -hmm. Right? And if they don't, then those aren't the people that you're looking for anyway. Yep. So it's not hard. It's not hard to do. The issue is not, in my opinion, it's not hard to get people to understand that they can make the five thousand dollars in a month, or the ten, right, uh, or the fifteen, because the fifteen thousand dollar a month plan is nothing more than three all-in sales a month. Yeah. Yep. You, you see, I mean, it's not. You just keep multiplying what you need. It's it's really simple. Isn't it easier <laughs> to get three all-in sales a month than it is to get, you know, a hundred. Um, $25 sales a month to still be short. You know, that doesn't make any sense. Yep. Uh, so, so that getting all in positioning is, this is a business, right? It's a business. You don't come in at the lowest level mm -hmm. and then expect to make the highest amount of return. Where do they, where they run a business that way? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't. Um, so that's the first thing. Now let's just say they don't have the the thirty five hundred for the master's course, or they don't have the 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 thousand dollars for the fifteen um, k right this second. Then step number two is be looking for ways to get it. Mm -hmm. Be looking for ways to get it. Go and at least you should be at the inner circle level. You should that listen. You absolutely deserve to have the twenty five dollar product, which is the blog, and the one hundred dollar inner circle. Why? Because if you want to know how seven figure earners think and process and manifest things that they do, then you're not going to learn that all over the place. Isn't it awesome that we have right here the co owner of the company that tells you how to go and do a mental process, attract the money that you want. You know, I've said it on stage a hundred times, Grant, I'd rather be hokey and pokey and rich than to be all dignified and broke, yeah. right? It's only weird if it doesn't work. If, I think it's a Budweiser commercial where all the guys like at the, at the games and stuff and they got these little superstitious things that they do because they want their team to win. Yeah. And each time they do, they, they take their beer glasses and do something, their team wins. Yeah. It's only weird when it doesn't work. Yeah. Right. If they do this and then the team wins, they're going to do it again next game. Yeah. Too. <laughs> right. So it's the same thing here. It's, you know, David Wood goes through a very exact process inside of our inner circle. I don't remember exactly what date it is. Um, but one of my team members, Brian Kane, he's 21 years old. He literally did not have the money for the um, Costa, not the Costa Rica, the master's course, 3,500. And he was taking a drive from California to Atlanta just because him and his friend wanted to. And he was listening to his, his inner circle and he actually decided, you know what, let me just do what Dave is telling me to do. Let me let go of all of my, you know, pre presuppositions about what it is and whether I think it's going to work and all of my mental blocks. Let me just do what the man's telling me to do. And he literally went through this process and he manifested the $3,500 for the master's course before he made it back to California. All right. Mm -hmm. And then he turned around and one of his team members went all in. Magically, he not only got the money, but he got it right back. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wasn't even with, you see what I'm saying? He wasn't even yeah. out of the money for any period of time, but it was because he believed and he went and he listened and he followed the directions of someone who was guiding him on a path where they knew how to get to the other side. Yep. So you've got to figure out how you're going to get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you just insist, if you absolutely insist that you're going to remain lack focused and you're going to remain, I can't, can't, can't buy anything more than 25 and a hundred. I can't, can't, can't make anything. I can't buy anything more than 25. I'm going to be honest. Okay. I am, I'm an honest person. And I think, you know, I'm kind of known for like the no nonsense approach to doing the business, not in a like super aggressive way, but it's, then it's not going to happen the way you want it to happen. Yeah. Just, just accept that. That's okay too. If you don't have it and you don't foresee a way to get it and you're not searching for a way to get it, Understand that a formula is a formula because E equals MC squared. Mm -hmm. You can't change the formula to fit you. Either you're going to fit within the formula so that it works, or you're going to accept the consequences that come along with it. And it's just being okay with where you are at mm -hmm. that point. 
Uh, so I'm not, you know, I'm not here to fool people into thinking, yeah, you can do the $25 and you can make $5,000 in a 30 day period of time. That's not the numbers. Yep. It's wishful thinking. Yeah. But, but it's not the numbers. It's not the way the business model works. The business model works for us to do less and make more. How do you do less and make more? Well, you might have to invest a little bit more upfront. You might have to study the trainings, actually, in yep. the 15K. You might need to go in there and listen to a couple of the Inner Circle audios. You might need to watch some training on Rob Four and um, Chris Record. When they're talking about the blogging, you might need to listen to Tony Rush as he talks about the email marketing formula. You might need to implement and do what Shakir Hussein is saying when he goes over how to generate 500 something leads every single day using solo S. You know, you're gonna have to build your skill set and you gotta buy the training in order to have access to it. If you think you're gonna make five, ten thousand dollars a month off of not being skilled in this profession, which is what it is, it ain't a hobby, right? Yeah. Only professionals get paid. Yep. then, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a far cry for it. And That's I'm just trying to keep it as real as possible. You don't expect an NFL person to go out there and, you know, not get paid. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they've earned the right to ask for a certain amount in a contract that a team and an organization is willing to pay. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. You get paid on your productivity. You don't get paid on what you want to tell people you're worth. This ain't corporate America. <laughs> Right. Um, we don't ride the clock. Right. If you if you can get your work done in two hours, that's better for you, actually. Yeah. You can make your five thousand dollars today and go off to the races yeah. Yeah. as opposed to sit there for 10 hours and ride the clock and get nothing done. It's the reverse. Yeah. So that's kind of a long winded response, Grant. But th that that is my response to it. If you want to make five thousand dollars in a month, the easy way, then get all in. Mm -hmm. Number two, get one new all-in person every single month. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Yep, absolutely. Simple. You know, it's funny what we are talking about. You know, you do what it takes to get all-in because that's where the money's at. That's how you're going to make the biggest uh, commissions and stuff like that. When Empower Network launched at the six hundred and twenty-five dollar level, that was that was the all-in. I, I had been marketing online for six months at that point, right, and I didn't have the money. I remember I was, I had just gotten laid off, right? <laughs> My wife comes in and you know, she, she's, she wasn't supportive at that point yet. And, uh, I remember she walked in and I thought, Oh God, you know, I'm going to tell her that I'm going to spend this 625. It's, she's going <laughs> to kill me. And absolutely not was her response. You are not going to do that. We don't have the money. You've spent all this money online trying to figure this out over the last six months. Hell no. You know, and I says, well, if you ain't going to give it to me, I'm going to ask my mom to give it to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and my mom, again, not supportive, right? But I still, I, it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do <laughs> uh, was call my mom and ask her for $625 to do something that she didn't agree with, you know, yeah. at the time. Now, trust me, my family's a lot more supportive now. Oh, I bet they are. Good money. <laughs> but, but it's funny. I, I told my mom, I says, because I had made a decision. I, ha I had the belief that it was going to work. Not to the same vision as Tracy because she's at a different level, but I knew that when I joined Empower Network, I was going to make money. I knew that if I took what I was doing in this other system and transferred it over to Empower, money was going to come. Absolutely. Through. I just Absolutely. believed it. You were already doing the required actions. Exactly. It's just the vehicle wasn't set up in the way that would give you your desired result. Exactly. Absolutely. And it was Dave Wood, so it's like, well, you know, I'm doing it. And so I, I called my mom. She's like, okay, you know, you need to go ask your dad. So I call my dad. He works out of town and tell him, I said, dad, I'll pay you back right away. Like I, I'm telling you, it could be as soon as the next, like the next day after this thing goes. And, um, I think it was probably three days after I borrowed the money from my parents. I had made my money back and paid them back. Wow. Um, went through all the stuff, got into when, um, I went to, to Atlanta Costa Rica master's retreat came was available, right? Here we are. It's like, okay, five G's. I didn't have five G's either. <laughs> when people, when people say they can't afford the, the Costa Rica masters for 3,500, I'm like, well, I borrowed five G's from my mom to go to, to, to buy be that there. Lunch. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's not including my airfare. So, I mean, in, in total, I spent eight grand on that course, yes. three of which was my own money from, from the business. Right. Yeah. And five of which was my mom's money. Yeah. Um, that I, 
in turn have to pay back. Luckily for me, she says, well, you pay me back with your commissions from the master's course. Great. Right. right? Just made my first sale. There's half of my, you know, <laughs> my borrowed money is going to be paid back to her. She, I, I, I couldn't wait to call her and tell her mom, I just made my first $3,000 sale. Oh, awesome. But, but, but here's what, what the bottom line. I made a decision. I had, I believed that it was going to happen. And I'll be honest, I didn't totally believe I was, a, I was, I've always been afraid to sell a $3,500 product. It wasn't until I made the decision to buy the product, mm -hmm. made the decision to follow this, the, the, the eight core commitments and, the, and go to the events that I'm able to come home and make sales at a $3,500 level. Exactly. Uh, I never, ever, when I first got started, imagined myself selling a product for $3,500 on the internet. Um, but because of this business, because of this opportunity and the leadership, the training, it's nothing anymore. You know, it's just nothing. And when you get to that place, it's exciting because as I'm approaching this place in my mind where money is not that big of a deal, mm -hmm. selling products at, at a high level are not that big of a deal, the belief is changing. And, and that's, to me, the, the ticket. That's when things start to, to transform and manifest uh, to, you know, growing big. I'll, I'll be honest, Tracy, when I... It's funny, I've been listening to Tony Robbins and he said something, I can't remember exactly how he worded it because it's the first time I've gone through this, this course. But when I first asked you right after the event to get on this hangout, I was, boom, I'm gonna get Tracy online, I'm gonna get so-and-so online, we're gonna do this, I'm gonna do these hangouts, it's gonna help promote my business, help my team, right? Um, obviously help Tracy a little bit. As soon as you said yes, as soon as you said yes, I got scared. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I did, I did, yeah. I'm like, at first oh, I was like, great. Right. I was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, great. She said yes. And then I'm like, two days later, all of a sudden my mind starts playing these tricks on me, telling me, Grant, you know, she's, she's making $70,000 a month in her business. You're making, you know, four or five. It's, you know, and, and, and you don't, you're not as eloquent of a speaker as her. And all these things started to attack me. Mm -hmm. And um, thank God for Tony Robbins. You know, Tony Robbins, he taught me this concept of taking, taking powerful moments in my life in my right hand, taking Tracy Walker interview in my left hand, going, yes, yes, when I thought of these powerful moments and Martin matching those two. And I'm telling you, like, I, I was doing this. It's funny because before this interview, um, which we're just about done with, I was walking through in my, my, my house and <laughs> just doing this. That's right. <laughs> to get myself pumped up. You know up. what? That's powerful NLP. Yeah. Right? That, that's an NLP technique to yeah. basically collapse, right? You're collapsing uh, a negative into a positive. Uh, where now your subconscious doesn't know the difference. Yeah, exactly. Right? If it doesn't know the difference and it can only associate it with the yes moments. Yes. Then go. Yeah, no. You know, it's, that's interesting um, because, you know, what, what I find, we were talking about um, you would never, you know, thought of, never thought of you would sell a $3,500 product online. And yeah. I've never seen a community of people excited once they do spend it. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. we are here. <laughs> I mean, you go somewhere else and you're down there begging people to to buy the middle package of five hundred dollars, yep. right? And maybe the top package might be twelve hundred dollars or something like that in a more traditional MLM. Um, in mine, the ones I've been involved with, they that's where they were. I mean, about twelve or thirteen hundred dollars was like the top package. And literally, when somebody would spend the money, I, I, it's almost like I wouldn't want them to spend the money subconsciously because I knew I was working so hard that I didn't believe that they would work as hard as I was working. So yeah. I was almost subconsciously repelling, repelling the money away. I don't want you to buy the top package because then your expectation is going to go up and I don't have enough to give you in order for you to attain the success you think is possible because I'm killing myself over here. Yeah. You don't, you're not going to do what I'm doing. Um, and so when somebody would spend twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, it wasn't a happy moment, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and, but here, I mean, people are literally like, "Yes, I just bought the master's course. I'm yeah. all in, right?" And we're like, "Yes, go, go, go! You just spent your thirty five hundred dollars. You spent your thousand dollars. You know, math, um, fifteen k people. Same thing. Costa Rica. Same thing. Even." Um, and it's, it's an amazing place to be where people are encouraged to get their education. Absolutely. It seems like college is the only place that we push our kids and celebrate getting in the debt. 
to, yeah. to go and get when the reality is when they come home, where are they staying generally back at home mm -hmm. or like with me, it took me a whole nother year to get a job and I, I had a master's degree. Really? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you pushed me, everybody pushed, pushes you to go to college and get all this stuff. And then when you're stuck with the college debt, the same people aren't running to your door every day to help you pay off that college debt. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not, um, here, you know, we're pushing people to get their education in something that they can actually turn around, utilize, and generate a profit should they choose to take action, no matter what. Uh, it's been proven so many times, Grant, that, you know, I did a, a, a video the other day. I said, there's just, there's just no one. There's no one that could tell me otherwise. I've seen it too much. At the beginning of this interview, I said, I've been an eyewitness, an eyewitness account to lives changing financially mentally, spiritually, some people physically, right? We're talking about like Christina Munoz over in Australia who has a spinal disease and because of the monies that she's earning with her Empower Network business, it's going to allow her to get the type of treatment that she needs to help her spinal injury basically eradicate itself or make it better or something like that. So that's a physical change yeah. as a result of what we're doing here and a, a better quality of life that she can have with her and her husband out there. I mean, I just have never felt as confident, as good, as thrilled, as heartfelt about you spending your $5,100 yep. than I've ever felt before. My, this is, if I were going to ask somebody and know that if they were willing to put in the work, know it, that they were going to do it, if they should put the $5,100 in, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely, without a doubt, I have no hesitation because I know that it's the best thing for you. Like a doctor, you go to the doctor and they say, you say, my elbow's hurting, and they write a prescription. Whether you go to Walgreens and fill it is up to you. Yeah. But he's prescribed the solution to the problem. Yeah. Right? And it's the same thing here. We are prescribing the solution. Whether you use it and fill your prescription or not, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. But you can't say that the script <laughs> ain't the right solution. Absolutely. So I'm thrilled to see people making investments in their education. Uh, my friend, Nicole Cooper, my sister, my, you know, I call her my IBFF, my on best friend, for, my internet best friend forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, Nicola is very passionate about, uh, as I am, but she's extremely passionate about people living and working in their passions. Right. And, and truly understanding that this education that you can get here at empower is not just about applying it to empower. So that's the crazy thing about it. This education is about how to be an online internet marketer yep. that if you learn the skill, you can go get a job. If you, if you want to work, you can go get a job at some of these fortune 500 companies that are looking to hire people that understand social media that understand internet marketing, that can help them save costs in their budgets and their advertising. There are companies paying six figures for people to come in and be able to help them grow their online presence. You can take these skills and go apply it to a whole nother part of your life and never make a dime in Empower. It's not about making the money in Empower. It's about enhancing your knowledge base and your skill set so that you can be marketable in today's society. And do I think that's worth your fifty one forty five? Hell yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I really do. You know, so you have to get in, and you have to get all in because you deserve it. Your family deserves it. You got to do better. If you had everything that you wanted, and if everything was so great and hunky dory, you wouldn't even be looking at this right now. Yep. It wouldn't. And if you're not in, you wouldn't even be compelled. You would have clicked off of this an hour ago. Yep. But there's something drawing you to it. And the something is that you can sense the realness of Grant. You know, you can sense the realness that I'm coming and we're speaking candidly about what it is. I didn't say something for nothing. Not once did we either, either of us say that. Yep. Not, neither one of us talked about not having to sacrifice something. Yep. Right. I mean, I went through foreclosure and a lot of different things. It's a yep. sacrifice to learn and to start at square one and to get over your ego about, you know, I got an MBA and I'm broke and whatever. <laughs> and I, you know, I said on Facebook some time ago, who would have ever thought, who would have ever thought that an ex drug addict and an ex homeless man would be the catalyst to help a MBA grad mm -hmm. make more money in her life than she's ever made before. 
leveraged income. Absolutely. An ex drug addict? Really? That's a beautiful <laughs> thing, man. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying. You know, you can't shoot the messenger. That is beautiful. Get busy. <laughs> Get busy. Click the button. <laughs> <and get> started. <laughs> man alive. So so we got the best of personal development. This is what this business is to me. The best of personal development, the best of leadership training and yeah. and entrepreneurial visionaries and the best of education and where else can you get all of that and make so much money a hundred percent commissions I mean imagine if you were to go to college right and for every person you referred which are basically everybody who was a junior and a sophomore when you were a senior referred to college you gotta pay a hundred percent of their tuition cost right it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful we've taken the best of the world take we've taken the best of everything in my opinion best of it all MLM education online marketing sifted through all the garbage, got that out, and now we've got here Empower Network, 100% mm -hmm. commission empire that's growing faster than anything else online and pays out more than anything else online. Yeah. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I'm excited. And so many more things are coming down. You know, I had to sign some NDAs. You're familiar with NDAs around here. Um, but I had to sign some NDAs. But there are some things that are going to be coming down the pipeline, Grant, that are going to be absolutely phenomenal because, listen, if you're going to be in an environment where you are creating wealth, through teams of people, right? Yeah. Uh, most people, uh, they win the lottery and they're broker than they were five years down the road than before they even won the lottery, right? It's because the mindset with money didn't change. They just started spending uh, from a, st a state of not ever having to now having, they don't understand how to maintain. Um, so we understand that, right? Yeah. And, and we want this to be a full-fledged place where it's not just about making the money. We want people to keep it. Right. And be able to do the right things with it and be able to leave legacies and build empires and um, not have to work the rest of your life. Uh, but it takes time. We're still growing. Right. And and we've got to put some things into play into production. But I just wanted to kind of put out there that this isn't just a place where we're just making a bunch of money. It's not it's not only about the money. We yeah. understand money is a tool, but it's a very powerful tool. It's like oxygen. Try living without oxygen. Yep. Right. And, and see what happens. Try not having money. It's hard to make the money, but it's hard to not have it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched my mom struggle when I was growing up. Um, and, and, you know, I'd rather do the hard work to make the money than to just complain about how hard it is to stay broke. Uh, I'm just not with that program. Yeah. And and so the encouragement is, yes, we want people to enhance the amount of money that they have because it, it provides a sense of relief number one you can take the stress off of your mind you're not worried about the bills the regular everyday bills a gas bill electricity bill things I had to have rigged because I couldn't pay for them yeah. um, and pay them up a year in advance if you want you know or pay your mortgage or your car note or whatever it is that you want to do um, get that out the way and then to be able to next month have the same amount of money if not more come back in after you just paid everything for the year yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden this beautiful tool that you've denounced your whole life because you ain't never had none of it can actually be the catalyst for change in other people's lives, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I want people to understand that empower is literally the name, right? Yeah, exactly. Empower people yeah. to yes, you got to get the money first, but yeah. once you get it, keeping it, circulating sure. it, right? Yeah. Money is energy; it doesn't sit still. Exactly. Right? So Circulating, you have to let it go and then it comes and it's a constantly moving thing. Give, you receive, share, you know, whatever. Being more comfortable with doing those things um, and being able to build a well rounded business is really our goal here. So we want you to make the money, but trust me, we're also going to be doing some things and teaching people how to keep it, hold nice. on to it, expand it. So I've, I've, I've been hoping that, honestly, I've been thinking like there's got to be. I've, I've felt that there's got to be something like that coming down because one of the things that I've heard Dave say that shocked me, the first time I heard him say it on stage, at, at, I think it was probably the first time was Atlanta, he said, live below your means. Where else does a guy who makes $200,000 a month tell you to live below your means? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Every other business out, out there is flashing the, the cars and flashing the, the, the jewelry and all this stuff. And great, you know, he, he has those things because he has above and beyond what he needs, right? But what he teaches us as a, as a network is to live below our means to give back to the community give back to the world people who need it more than us and uh, I mean that to me that 
that, that is so amazing because there's there's so few things out there like that that are living by those and and, and, and growing by those expectations uh, for us as individuals. And it's just, it, this is a leadership factory, as I've heard it say is. a lot of times. It is. It's a leadership factory. I mean, I, I do a lot of studying with like T. Harv Ecker. In fact, T. Harv Ecker's son is an Empower Network. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> Network. That's awesome. Um, I believe he's on um, 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 Chris Records' team, Team Take Massive Action. I think he's uh, with, with Peter Sorensen. Um, but nonetheless, my point is, you know, I study from, from T. Harv Ecker, and he has an actual uh, program where it essentially teaches you how to, like, budget your money. We don't have to get into all of that, but essentially it's be able to live on 50%. Yeah. Of, of your income, right? And and if you can't live on 50% of your income, it's because you're living beyond your means. Yep. And 50% is relative, right? Yep. It's not 50% only if you're making 100,000. No. Yeah. Live on 50% if you're making 500,000. No, if you make $40,000 a year, mm -hmm. listen, the only way that you're going to be able to to move that money and not live check to check is you got to be able to live some kind of way on 50%. Now, if you realize that that's not reasonable, then mm -hmm. that's a clue. Mm -hmm. That's a clue that until you change something, <laughs> <Big problem. laughs> you're going to have a serious problem. Because if you can't live on 50%, and again, that's the E equal MC squared, that's the formula, mm -hmm. then you're going to be stuck paycheck to paycheck every time. Because in this society, I mean, maybe living on 20000 is impossible. Maybe it is. I don't know. There clearly there are people that are living below that, or there are people living below the poverty level here, um, yep. and and abroad too. But if you know that it's difficult for you to maintain your lifestyle living on fifty percent, then you're down. You're headed down the broke road. Yeah. Right. And at 65, 70, 80 years old, you're going to be working somewhere just to make ends meet, as opposed to enjoying your grandkids or going on a vacation somewhere and really just, you know, enjoying your life. And I just don't want that for people. I just don't want it. So if you're making 40,000, 50,000, 20,000, 30,000, now is the time to decide that you've got to add something to the mix so that you can increase your income level without attaching additional time requirements to it. Like second job isn't what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Cause that's exchanging money for time. Got to find a way to ex to expand your income through some leveraged activities, so that then you raise your level so that half becomes higher, mm -hmm. right? And then when half gets to be fifty thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars or seventy or whatever it is, then suddenly it's not so bad to live on half. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, and so I budget my money in that way. You know, um, from day one, started with Empower Network. You know, literally, I'll put, I'll keep 60% um, uh, or I'll keep 40% really for like personal stuff that I have going on. And the other 60 gets reallocated. 20 goes to marketing, 20 goes to taxes, um, five goes to gifting, five goes to savings. Uh, what's that? 20, 40, 50. Uh, I think 10 goes to, um, I have an, um, a, what did I say, travel? I can't remember exactly what, oh, I got it written down somewhere. But anyway, I reallocate those funds that other 60% get separated accordingly, yeah. right? Yeah. Which means that now my 40% is what I'm living off of, essentially, yeah. right? Yeah. And that other 60 got to run the business, it's got to pay the bills of the business, it's got to do marketing, it's got to do this, it's got to do that. So if anything were to ever go backwards for any reason, I I can't imagine that it would, but I've been down that road before, <laughs> right? So this time around, I ain't playing no games, Grant. Right? I, want to, I don't want to lose it again, yeah. it. right? So I'm willing to live below my means to safeguard the longevity of what we have so that we can live footloose and fancy free without being fearful of a layoff or a cut in pay or this or that. I should be able to take my skills and any of the budgeted money that I have and re reinvest it into something and start all over again and build faster because I'm not fighting the whole I don't have money yet. Yep. yep. You guys, this is this is so much more than a business. I mean, this is a, a life transformation. And if you if you fully submerse yourself in what we're doing, what Tracy's talking about here, I mean, two years down the road, three years down the road, maybe even sooner, six months uh, away from from now, your life is not going to be the same. Not even a little bit. Um, 
So wherever you're at, don't, don't focus on that. Focus on where you're going and click the link below this video. Get started. I'm telling you, it's, it's the best decision I've ever made financially, business-wise, um, income, whatever. You know, I mean, it's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And I think Tracy would agree with me. That's, it, it's the Absolutely. same for her. Um, if you're going to build a team, build it here. Build it at Empower Network. Uh, if you want to go do other businesses or if you already have another business, not a problem. But start with Empower Network and funnel your traffic, funnel your members into something else if that's what you want to do. You're going to make more money here anyways, so you might as well start with Empower Network and then build your little stuff on the back end. You know what I mean? Um, whatever, whatever you're doing now, whatever you want to do later. Okay? Um, not to mention that every, when we talk about leadership factor, if you want to be successful in another business or in whatever you're doing already, I, I'll bet dollars to donuts and in fact, I know for, I don't even have to bet, I know for a fact I'm telling you that nothing is going to compare to what you're learning here at Empower Network. Absolutely. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, and with that said, Tracy, unbelievable. You, you have completely just wowed me. I've learned a lot. I've taken a couple pages of notes. <laughs> I mean, just, it's a scribbled mess. I think I'm going to probably doctor it up a little bit, but... Um, I hope that the people watching this took notes because there was so much that you that you offered in this in this hangout, and I just I'm, I'm unbelievably grateful to you, to your leadership, to the example that you set, um, and I'm a lot more confident talking to a seven thousand seventy thousand dollar. <laughs> We're still normal people, Grant, right? Absolutely. The money, you know, I learned a long time ago that money doesn't change people. I grew up with people saying that, you know, money changes, money changes, right? More money, more problems, that changes people. And and I, I learned somewhere along the process that really money doesn't change you. Money enhances who you really are. Yeah. So if you were a giver before, money will allow you to give more. If Absolutely. you were an egotistical maniac, broke, Oh my God, you are just going to be a rich egotistical maniac. Yep. You know? uh, it's just, it's just whoever you are innately money is going to allow that to come out and be more present. Um, exactly. And so, you know, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for reaching out. Um, it's, I, it, you know, we're just the same. We're the same. It's just maybe I've run around the track, maybe five more. I started earlier in the morning than you did running the track. Yep. That's it. Right. Yep. But we're still running the track. Nonetheless, I'm just a couple of laps ahead. That's yep. it. But the same work ethic, the same regimen, we're thinking the same things. We're doing the same things. We're the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's definitely my pleasure. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Tracy. Really appreciate it. I'm gonna, with that, I'm going to end the broadcast. You guys click the link, get started, get her done. All right. Get involved. Yeah. We'll see you later. Bye.